together and trying to put aside their differences and bring you the fantastic world of college football. list i was like oh this would be easy um but man once i sat down and really tried to put an order to this list it became a lot more difficult than i I thought it would be absolutely so yes we're going to be handling the top five most important games the upcoming season for the gators on chris's side and for florida state on mine and i i think that there's an added layer with everything we've talked about so far with the new coaches with the new staff yeah. And uh, obviously with recruiting and all the new players coming in, but that's nothing new to college football. I just think there's a little bit extra to these games this year uh, because of those factors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's on both ends. It's weird having coaching changes for both teams the same year and very similar styles too. That makes it another um, interesting wrinkle to it. Sure. Don't know if that's ever happened, yeah. at least in my lifetime that I know of. New coach yeah, same yeah. Year. Well, especially with FSU having Bobby Bowden for like thirty decades, so <laughs> right, <laughs> a little stability there, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So okay, well we'll uh, we'll follow the usual format. I'll let you start, Chris, with your number five. I'll go with my five. We'll rotate four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, and All right. uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have some some Gator comments here and there, and you'll have some for me also, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and. I'm just going to warn everyone, my list is um, not your typical list, and I'm probably going to upset some people. Um, I'm probably going to have people throw their visors on the ground, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Darth Visor. Uh, I, yeah. I'll never get over that nickname. It's very <laughs> fitting for Spurrier. All right, well, let's let's start the, uh, the upheaval right now, then. Let's go with your number five, Chris. Okay. Um, that will be... Um, one of many revenge games for this <laughs> this upcoming season, and that is uh, when we play LSU. Um, it is uh, it was that game that was really that uh, that corner that began the downward spiral last year. It was that LSU game? We thought we had them. They just lost to Troy. It was in the swamp, and we just laid a goose egg against them. And now we get to. To play them again, a chance to, um, uh, I don't know, prove ourselves, um, I, especially with this offense and going up against a traditionally good defense like LSU. It's going to be an important game, obviously, the revenge factor. Also, and the rivalry starting to heat up again um, with okay. uh, us and them. So I think it's a very important key game in the middle of the season. Um, October is that that tough stretch typically for us. So um, that's why it's number five. Okay. You know, I'd actually didn't remember they'd come off. I knew they'd lost to Troy. But I didn't know that you, the Florida Gators play them right after that. Yeah. Maybe they were looking ahead. Oh Florida. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Tough one. Okay. Number five. All right. So for me, my number five is actually uh, the mighty Hokies of Virginia tech. Okay. So first game of the season, uh, this obviously sets the tone for the entire year, the entire tenure of Willie Taggart. And one thing that I really hope the coaching staff does not overlook, because we've done this before, is the five-day turnaround after this game is over. We play it on mm-hmm. Monday night, and then five days later we play Sanford. I know it's a very easy, winnable game, but Chris, you and I went to a game together on Labor Day night yeah. in Tallahassee. Yeah. And... It was a grueling, exhausting game, and five days later, we almost lost to Jacksonville State. In fact, it came down to the last two minutes. We had to pull out the win. Yikes. It was very, very scary. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. When you look at the scoreboard and you're trailing 9-7 to seven with a minute, nine minute, excuse me, 90 seconds, two minutes to go, uh, you're scared. <laughs> So yeah, we, we, we managed to salvage the win, but we were just exhausted, uh, just for everybody's reference. The 2009 year, we played Miami on Labor Day night. Right. And when you when you go up a team like that and 
I don't know. With us on a on a Labor Day game, you get one of two things: terrible defenses or terrible offenses. It's you don't yeah. get anything in the middle. So, I, they're not pretty. They're not pretty games. Yeah, it. That's that's another reason why it's important to win this game. I, I, Virginia Tech did us some favors. They have some guys in trouble, and a lot of their key players are not going to be actually playing for this game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Where, so, where did you say? Where did you say it was played at? It's in Tallahassee. Yeah, that, okay, that's good. That's good so, for y'all. Yep, home game. I think we're yeah, probably a score favorite. Maybe five, six okay. points. Something around there is probably fair. Okay. So, All right. Yep. That's a good pick, good pick. Um, my number four is um, at Mississippi State. Mm. And that is another one of those we got your coach games and we don't we don't seem to play good in those games, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot. I know they're going to be hyped. They're going to be uh, – the fans are going to be rabid. Um, it, Mullen's got a lot to prove um, this whole season, especially to Mississippi State. And he's going to be – he's never going to say this, but he wants to prove to them like he made the right choice of leaving. Okay. And uh, so it's going to be – it's an SEC West road game, which typically we don't do well against. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right after Tennessee and right before LSU. So that's that sweet spot there. Um, so I'm nervous about that game. I don't, I don't, I, I think I officially have us losing that game, but it is a, it's an important game of who it is, where it falls in the calendar. Okay. Is it, you think a loss because of Todd Grantham coming to Florida? No, it's just mainly because it's going to be right after Tennessee and right before LSU. I just think it's a typical trap game, um, and they're they're already they already hate. I don't say if they hate Mullen, but they're real. The fans are going to be real um, pumped up and fired up because they want to beat Mullen. Sure, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can understand that. Uh, t- the SEC schedule is just murderous year after year um so it is it doesn't matter what team and so you mentioned the sec road west it, it, you plug anybody in there that'll be a stumbling block for a lot of programs yeah um yeah. now is it i forget the sec scheduling setup is it one sec west road game a season or will you just rotate in on a, like a two-year basis a team we have we play lsu every year okay. and we rotate that and then we have another West team that that one, and that could be random, not random, but like Mississippi State it, at Mississippi State. But last year it was home to A and M. Oh. So the following year it'll be home to some team, then away to a West, then home to a West. Oh. But that one rotates every year, and LSU is a, it stays on the schedule. I see. Yeah. The poor it's, thing. If it's uh, if that made any sense at all, it does. You don't do a home and home then. That's that's what an- the answer to that no, question. No. Yeah. So we play like we'll play like Mississippi State once every like six years, but um, we won't play at Mississippi State again till like in twelve years. Wow. So if that something it's something like that, it's ridiculous. Okay. So you get exposure to see them. Well, if you're if you're a recruit coming in, you're gonna play four years. You probably yeah. see every team once, but it may not be at home. Okay, I guess that's yeah. the the concept. the The ACC does something similar, but they also keep a home and home. So, like this okay. year, we host Virginia Tech because they're on the coastal, and our permanent rival on the other side is Miami. Uh, but the ACC is really weird because we have Notre Dame mixed in, so. They have a contract to play five ACC teams a year. That's Man, why I think it's really weird. Notre Dame just always seems to. <laughs> Ugh. Um, and yeah, they also fill our bowl bids. Uh, so thank you for taking the good ones. Appreciate that. Yeah. And then they got they messed up Rudy. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, um, speaking of, my number four pick is Notre Dame. We're going to South Bend, Indiana this year. Wow, that's there's uh, a fun game it is and that's that's why it makes our t- schedule so tough is because this one's away uh, this is this is something that's always a really good matchup 
um, classic sometimes. You think about the 2014 game where we eked out a, a win on the last play, um, the 93 game, which was our only loss, and we still won the national championship. They were mad. You know, it uh, it makes it really tough to go uh, to South Bend, especially when we're going, which is November 10th. It's going to be cold. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got this game right after NC State and then two weeks after Clemson. So it is – it's a very tough spot. Uh, very hard November for us, actually, and this is one of the reasons why. Uh, they still have a quarterback debate. Uh, they got a couple of guys that can throw in. Their passing game wasn't fantastic, but – Without a doubt, their defense and their running attack uh, are both top ten, and so that's what we're going to have to really, really fight to to keep at bay. Um, interesting note, though, their defensive coordinator went to Texas A and M with uh, none other than Jimbo oh. Fisher. So we'll see if the defense stays on par. Don't know right. how that's going to go, but in our favor also is Notre Dame is like nine and twelve in November with Brian Kelly, so they got some work to do. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be a real, real fun game to watch. Absolutely. Um, that's kind of one I'd like to go to one year. I just can't drive the 22 hours or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. All right. So we are at my number three, and this is where the list gets interesting. Hmm. Okay. And my number three is FSU. Wow. I know. I know. Very, very controversial. Um, it's an important game. It is big for recruiting, um, bragging rights. I mean, we really don't have to go on I, I, to selling why it's important. Kind of, maybe I should be selling why it's only number three. Okay. Um, but I guess that that'll come later when I do two and one. But um, let's just say it's not in our conference, so that's kind of why it, it knocked it down. But it's still a very important game. I think it's going to be the game in a couple of years um, when we're both – because both programs are down right now. Right. But once they're both back up, it's going to be – it's going to be one. Uh, it's a, going to be a no-brainer. Um, but I think the, the key thing is that we have to end the streak. Um, what are it, six years now or something like that? Yeah, last one was 2012. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah, I think um, – but – that's like the biggest thing is ending the streak and then obviously recruiting. Um, but if we lose that game, I don't think we're at a point where it's going to really hurt us nationally. Okay. Um, that's kind of why it's three. If it was a game where, where I think we were, you know, go, could possibly be in the playoffs and they could stop us, then I will. But I don't think we're going to, we're not messing with that just yet. Okay. Number three, interesting. Uh, of course, the recruiting. You're right. Uh, I never like facing the Florida secondary, uh, top ten unit in the nation still every yeah, year. I think so. Yeah. But yeah, you, you never know where the programs are going to be. I would assume Florida State will be favored in that game. But having yeah. gone through the rigors of our November uh, and with Mullen's offense given twelve, excuse me, eleven games to perfect, yeah, it's. It could be a toss-up. I, I see no reason why Florida State wouldn't be favored, though. Yeah, uh, in Tallahassee, yeah. 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 So. can understand. Interesting. Yeah. The non-conference game. Yeah, I know. I sound like someone uh, huh. from in the 90s, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Notre Dame is non-conference for me, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I certainly understand that, and I am nervous going into – any new coach, when your old coach only lost two rivalry games in eight years, ever, that's uh, that's hard to keep up with. So, despite all the feelings that Florida State fan would have, I, yeah, Jimbo left in a mess, but I'm, we certainly could be very comfortable to say, uh, I think we can win this rivalry game by 14 points, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I. All right. Well, speaking of rivals, number three for me. Top five games next year is Miami. Okay. okay. You got a team that we just just narrowly missed out on beating, and we had a streak going against them. So revenge, of course. They beat us at home. That to me, I don't know, talk about inflection points or when the the season changed. Uh, that was the game that was supposed to be probably the best game in the state of Florida, at least in September. It was really early on and got moved because of the hurricane. 
Right. So that kind of jacked up the scheduling. So you get this you get this matchup, and this is always the case when we play Miami. If they win, it's by four points or less. It is always close. Yeah. Um, I don't know about always because we beat them in Miami two years ago by one point because we blocked the extra point. So just a little – that just tastes a little sweeter, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to beat them by – Given the history, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Plenty of special teams goofaws to share in that series. So – uh, you look at this, and you know I know we don't play them until early October, but Miami plays LSU week one. I, I bring that up because Miami is probably going to come in top ten, I'm guessing, most polls. Yeah. LSU, ah, around the teetering of the 25 ranked er- area, right. and I don't know that LSU doesn't win that game. Yeah, uh, that's and, you know they they play us four weeks later, five weeks, whatever. Uh, I mean, I would easily say the Tigers could win that. Now, this is a neutral site game. I can't remember where it's played. It's one of those Atlanta, probably. Right. That uh, And that's like the Sunday night before Labor Day. That uh, A non-conference game like that, when you open your season, hey, Florida State learned last year. You can lose like that, and it can change your entire year. Yeah, yeah. E- easily, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're a team that they'll lose to Troy, but then they'll beat some really, really good teams. So they're dangerous. They're very dangerous. I love how every conference has that team. We usually, yeah. like, you know who that is. For us, it could be a couple, but I think it's Pittsburgh. Right. Because they'll be four and seven, and then they beat Clemson last year. So you're like, what? Or excuse me, they beat Miami. My, my apologies. Um, or you'll have like a Syracuse. They beat Clemson. But they were terrible. They didn't go to a bowl, you know? Right. So. Right, right. <laughs> they're becoming that team. They used to be a dominant team, but now they're that team that, there's, <laughs> you don't watch the film from last week because it's irrelevant. <laughs> it's, just don't. Just, just know they're going to show up. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I um, I gotta say I like your list so far. Surprise at three. So, two in conference. I'm anxious to know what number two is because we're running yeah. out of teams here. Go ahead. Okay. Um, number two is uh, at Tennessee. I knew it. Yeah, you kind of figure. You kind of see where it's going now, okay. but. Um, yeah, that is not our first, but it's our second SEC game. It's the first road game that we have, and we sh- should win. We should be favored, um, but it's still a rivalry game. It's still Tennessee. It's at Tennessee, and it's that you don't want to be in the in the back seat. Um, when it comes to the SEC East race, and that's the first big test. We okay. we do have Kentucky before that, um, but that's that's the real big test. Like, okay, are we kind of legit? Is this team heading in the right direction at least? Do we look good? Where it's the fourth game of the season, the first true road game. Like, we're gonna get hit in the mouth. I know we are. Like, we're really gonna see what this team's made of on that game. And we need to win that game to have any shot of the East. And you don't want to be behind early in the season trying to play catch up. So that's a very crucial game. It's that swing game. Are we going to start the season off great? Or are we going to try to hope other teams lose and stuff like that? So very important. Yeah. And Knowing you, that that doesn't surprise me because we've talked about the rivals and our feelings about our those teams. So I'm glad you put yeah. that in perspective. It's almost like you're describing that game as like a, it's a self measuring stick. This is oh, yeah. telling us, okay, how good are we really? Yep. And is that like late September? It's usually around that time frame. Yeah, yeah, okay. late September. Um, it's always been that measuring stick game for us. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah unless we well, last year we did um, we had Michigan the first game. That, that kind of early measuring stick, mm-hmm. but usually it sets our first true test. Okay. It's the Tennessee game. Okay. Well, I like it. That makes a lot of sense. The, the landscape of the SEC is very different than it was, but that's been the consistent one probably over the last 20 years uh, is the timing of it, and that makes perfect sense so you know exactly where you are. Yeah. Uh, all right. So you got LSU. So two West teams. You had five and four. Okay. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm comparing lists here because I had Virginia Tech is in the Coastal. Notre Dame is at a conference. Miami's in the Coastal. And now I'm going to flip over to the Atlantic Division. And the number two game, important for Fort State, in my opinion, is NC State. Ah. I almost put this number one. Right. I really did. But this is early November, and at this point, by Halloween, we're going to know, okay, are we bowl eligible? Are we in contention for the Atlantic? Or we might already be eliminated Mm -hmm. if you're going with eight and four kind of record. Something about... NC State. It's just something about them. That's all I really can say. I'm not even going to say what it is about them because I don't know right. what it is. They're just that team. Right. Um, I actually did a little research. I just wanted to know what is it about NC State. There's no numbers to it either. Over the last 20 years, any guess of what our record is against NC State? 20 years? Yep. Um, so going from 98 until 2017. So 20, 20 games. 20 games. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have ten and ten just because you're selling it. That's pretty close. Um, okay, twelve and eight. Twelve and eight. Okay. Yep. Um, the way that breaks down is seven and three at home, five and five on the road. Okay. And this is not a stable program. NC State somehow shockingly produces NFL quarterbacks like Philip Rivers. <laughs> Yeah. And they produce a lot of NFL talent, Russell Wilson. Right. They get a lot of guys there, but then it's never consistent success, especially since uh, their coach O'Brien left. But somehow they just they get the best of us. You know, they beat us in Tallahassee in 2017. We actually had won four in a row up to that point, which was nice. But, like, in 2012, we went into that game undefeated, 8-0, and lost on the road. Um, in 2010, we were going to the end zone on the one-yard line and fumbled the ball away to lose it um, mm-hmm. after we gave up a touchdown on a fourth down to them. And in 1998, going back that far, that was the only loss we had in the regular season was NC State. Right. Yeah. It, uh, it, that's why, to me, it's important. And this year, it, it's really, in my opinion, the time for us to create some divisional separation. You know, it's it's almost like they have, uh, by the way, probably the best wide receiving and quarterback core in the whole conference. Really? Yep. And so they're dangerous. Um, hint, hint to anybody who wants to take a long shot at an ACC title, bet NC State. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, the dark horse? Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be great odds because you have Clemson in the same division. But uh, if you want to take a risk, this is the team to do it on. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? They are going to simply wear out our defensive backs that game, and I, it's it's a game we just have to show up for and win. To me, losing that game puts us third in our own division. That's that's the way I see it. Clemson's a clear number one, and we we have to compete with the progress that they've made um, with their new coaching right. staff. So that's right. why I put them that high. Okay, that's good. I that's a I figured they'd be like a five, but number two. All right. Mm-hmm. All right, so my <laughs> number one um, is the Idaho Vandals. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. I was reading something wrong. It is the University of Georgia. <laughs> I, I misread my notes, I guess. Uh, Georgia, that's definitely our, our number one Um because you talk about a measuring stick, mm. that's the measuring stick on our schedule. That is, you know, a national runner-up and probably should have won the game. If we want to see how good we are, that's the team. Okay. That's the team. I don't see us winning that, um, but it's a rivalry game. Who knows? But if we want to get a good gauge of where this program is, where we're going. I don't even think we I'm not expecting a win. I'm just expecting us to not get blown out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's just what you know, it's it's sad with where we are with the program. But I want to see some kind of improvement. You know, it's it's late enough in the season where we can kind of get some kind of gel on offense. You want to see how good you are. You play the best and 
on our schedule, Georgia's the best. So, and plus, you don't like you want to get the taste of that blowout out of your mouth, sure. and you don't want to see you, you want to beat your rival, and so it's definitely why it's number one. Plus, them being in the conference and the East and so on also plays a factor. Okay. You caught me totally off guard by the Idaho. <laughs> um, do you guys actually play Idaho this year? We do, right? You do, before right Florida before Florida State. State. Okay. Yeah. Um, right and also with Georgia, you know, Kirby Smart's a defensive guy. I, I want to see how our offense does against their defense. Okay. I really like that. Um, neutral site game. Yep. Yeah. I mean – Probably in every, de- every definition of the word, it's probably split fifty fifty in Jacksonville. I would assume attendance wise. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I do. That's uh, that's impressive. Um, so you you kind of covered some of your expectations and what you're looking for in that game. Um, do you anticipate any any game up to that changing that comp the the landscape of how the game plays out? Like, yeah, I know that they play. I think LSU. Okay. Also, and I think they play at South Carolina. Um, I know they play out at South Carolina before us, and I think they play LSU before us. Okay. So maybe they slip up twice there. You know, we could be in the running for the East. Um, I, I think we have an easier schedule than they do. Okay. Overall, um, so it, it could be it could be for the ICC East. Very well could be. Um, so that's why it's important. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. if they were to, to come in with a loss or two, that certainly would change it. Okay. Yeah. Great point. Great point. Yeah. All right. Georgia Bulldogs. And, I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right. So my number one game for Florida State top five is Clemson. Oh. <laughs> As you would Florida imagine. got the snub. <laughs> Florida. And I felt, I felt bad putting in FSU at three, three but – yeah, Florida Florida goes on my honorable mention. Oh. Um, this time. I don't uh I don't really see a whole need to worry about that game. Mm-hmm. I I think we've got some other some other things to take care of, some other business items, some other bigger action fish steps. To fry, okay. Or bigger tigers to fry. We'll see. I got you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, with Clemson, uh the cachet with being in the playoff, uh losing three years in a row. Going up against the best defensive line in the nation, arguably. Uh, Clemson, by the way, is a one to two odd favorite to win the ACC, which means if you bet a dollar, you get fifty cents at the end of the year. Mm. They're not even okay. taking money, just like the Alabama right. syndrome. Right. It's uh, you know, the ACC media day is always like ninety nine percent of writers, and then some people that were showing up, you know, loopy voted for like the other teams. Right, because right. they're so clearly a favorite, and I don't. I see them slipping up one game. I couldn't tell you where it is. Obviously, I want it to be us, but I don't think it will be. And we have to shed that. You know, if I were to, most people that look at this game, they would think these guys have been rivals forever. And it depends on who you ask. All right. With, I'm going to venture to say the Clemson fans they hate us way more than we hate them. Just because. Florida State joins the ACC in the early 90s, and it was their conference before that, and we came in and we took it away. Right, right. And we won for a lot of time. After the early 2000s, basically when Mark Rick left, things started to look a little different. Uh, we were basically losing to them every other year, always at Clemson. We lost 03, 05, 07, 09, 2011, all on the road. Right, wow. And, you know, the funny thing is we were winning all those games at home the alternating years. Then when we in 2012 win three in a row to 13 and 14, and then they've beat us three years in a row. So it's it's we've seen a pretty discernible pattern in how the game's going to go. Right. Um, up until the last six years, it was whoever hosted it was basically going to win it. And you know, I'm just I'm just tired of seeing them go to the ACC title game. Really, that's what it comes down to. That's exactly how they felt about you guys <laughs> yeah. for forever. <laughs> yeah. Um. Quick, uh, quick quiz question for you. Jimbo was the head coach at Florida State for nine seasons. How many ACC titles did he win? Two? Uh, yeah, three. Three, okay. Two of them wow. with Jameis, one without. 
Oh, okay. Who was the team in our way? Clemson. <laughs> yep. Every time. So, you know, I, it's funny to me that now you're going to hire a guy who couldn't get past one team, and now he's got to try to get past Bama, LSU, Auburn. Okay, good luck. Yeah, that's not a smart yep. move. So that's, to me, the biggest game for us of the year. Right. Wow, that's good. That's good. You know, for me, I I was really, like, no joke, tempted to put Charleston Southern as one. <laughs> Just because it to be funny and kind of coach speak, like our biggest game is the next game. Oh, <laughs> And I, I was prepared to go that whole angle and, and go that all, whole argument. But I was just like, I just can't. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. I mean, it's a huge game. It's it's the biggest, it's it's the first game. It's you know, the first time you get to see this offense for real, whatever. But I'm like, I just, if you scale it back a little bit, you can't really. <laughs> but I really wanted to. Really there's, wanted there's ways to. these guys can get us and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah, um, well, I mean, what really, what really made me not do it is because Muschamp said this all the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I bought it at first, and I was like, "Wait a minute, wait a minute, shut up." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I mean, but, those, those teams know what they're getting into. Also, they don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, somebody, a buddy of mine, went to the Florida State, Delaware State game in 2017 last year, and. Those guys at Delaware State knew what was they were there for. Right. They were getting blown out. They didn't care. They were on the sideline having fun. Right. You know, right. even those teams don't even take it that seriously. So there's no reason for the, the bigger schools to. Yeah. And they're getting paid. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Um, for I'm mean, interested to hear your thoughts and your honorable mentions. I was considered South Carolina. Okay. Because if something crazy goes to Georgia and, and losing, that could be – um, a game that we would need to win to win the East because it's at the end of the season. Yeah. It's a possibility uh, there, plus the win must champ. And then Kentucky just wanting to keep the streak alive would be interesting. would be fun. Okay. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's something to look at. For me, I, I mentioned the Florida game, but um, I, I, I nearly had that at number five and then Virginia Tech in the sixth spot because Virginia Tech, that, that game's lost a lot of cachet. But yeah. we just don't see them that often, which is why I kept it there. And so, uh, you've I, you've used the word cachet twice in this episode. <laughs> Did you just learn that word yesterday? <laughs> the you know the the calendar I got for Christmas. You know that yeah, one okay. popped up. That's your word of the day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I do, I do the same thing with new words. So, <laughs> I, but I see what you're doing. I'm going to yeah. call you out. I see what you're doing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, the other honorable mention and. I don't really know that there's – I never thought I would say this, but I really want to beat Boston College really, really bad because last season we lost 35-3, to and it was inexplicable and unexcusable, and, you know, there was very little cachet to that game. There was no <laughs> reason why it should have gone that, that badly. You know, you see that, and I knew it was looking desperate when we pull out a really, really – Interesting trick play on the first drive Mm. where our running back throws a very long, like 50 yard pass. By the way, we still didn't score, but I see that right away. And I'm like, this is not going to be good. I just had a feeling we kick a field goal before halftime. And I'm like, Hey, at least we didn't get shut out. And I did not think that would be the only score of the game. And it was, wow. You're kind of like joking, but then like, Oh, (laughs) this is real serious. Yep. Um, what makes the Boston College game just really, really interesting is the timing of it because our November is – well, October 27th is Clemson, November 3rd, NC State, November 10th, Notre Dame, November 17th, Boston College, November 24th, Florida. Mm. So we don't get the the cupcake game before the Gators this time. So that that could be very interesting. Okay, yeah, we, we do – we are fortunate that we do have that cupcake yeah. cupcake game before. It's a, an indubitably win for us, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> um, and for us, really, the reason why is because we have Notre Dame this year. And so whenever you get them, yeah, it's it just kind of jacks everything yeah. up. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. Well, we are showing off our English skills today. <laughs> this sh- we are going off the rails. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, that's that's a really good top five. Uh, I I really did look forward to your reaction when I put Florida as an honorable mention. But um, well, when you when you said your number two, I was like, he's either gonna say Clemson or Florida, and like, which one's he gonna leave out? <laughs> And man, you got me. Yep. You got well, me and, you know, once once the recruiting for Florida gets there, and I'm certain it only take this one season, uh, yeah. then that game is going to be a lot more important. And I, I agree. Uh, we need to get the game back where it was in the '90s, and yeah, that's where it wants to be, and that's where it needs to be. That's where the state of Florida really just excels, and the football is at its highest peak. Yeah, and, and college football wins. Yeah, all together. So, absolutely, I see no reason that it can't be there in about three to five years. Yeah, me too. I think it will be. I really do. All right. So that'll cover Florida State and Florida. Uh, I know you and I wanted to uh, kind of go around the state a little bit, and so I'll let you go first. Did you see any other schedules or any games from Florida teams that really stood out to you? Yeah, um, Miami's schedule. They start off with a game, like you said, versus LSU. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be insane. Plus, you throw in Florida State, um, Georgia Tech after last year's close one, and Va Tech and Pitt. The, the last three games, that's a tough gauntlet for them. Um, I wonder how they're going to do. It, they're in a they're in a very easy division, so that works in their favor. But. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why Florida State has such a tough schedule is because we obviously play in the Atlantic and then we see Miami, Virginia Tech on the other side. We don't we don't even play like UNC or Virginia, which are two of the worst teams in the conference. Oh, okay. So they're just like last year and the Wisconsin's or pick a Big Ten West team, whoever, they're just, their season is going to look deceptively good when it's really not because they're going to have an easy road. Right, right. right. I think they're just going to have – I think they – um, uh, I guess they they weren't as good as their schedule mm. um, showed last year. If you watch the games, it was a struggle. So I I wouldn't be surprised if they had lo- they lose more games this this coming year. Um, I just I just don't see that them repeating their success. Right, and uh, Vegas, from what I've seen, agrees with that. Okay. <laughs> you know they they. They're going to be favored to win the Coastal, but it's it's really not on their own merit. It's just right. the lesser of two evils or you know three evils or how many right. on that side? Six or seven <laughs> teams. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, nine and three is still not a bad year, but True. when you have their expectations, you know, yeah. those, those three games, um, you really should be handling business. Yeah, so, I, absolutely. Good observation. Yeah. Um, going up the state a little bit to Boca Raton – that is where the Florida Atlantic mm-hmm. fighting Lane Kiffins play. <laughs> um, the game that stood out to me, and I think you and I mentioned it previously, was UCF is interesting. Yeah, that's at UCF, yeah. In Orlando, it's pretty early on. I think it's week three. And, I, you know, it's, it's pretty clear to me the American is the best conference in the group of five. So, and got, country in the, in the world. Okay. <laughs> Well, according to the the Florida governor, yes, they're national yes. champions. So, right. and you know they had a parade at Disney World. Did they? I was there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I wanted to see what that was all about. Right, right. So, um, yeah, they, they have they have the hardest path to win the conference, but they're clearly the best team. Yeah, uh, right. you're gonna have your. Uh, in fact, I'll just share the kind of certain, their games. They have Pittsburgh. That's a that's a bowl eligible Power Five team. That's really all I can say about them. Uh, but you know that doesn't hurt their resume to win a game right. like that. Uh, Memphis, obviously, they played in the title game and in the regular season. They're going to play them probably twice again, and then South Florida. Yeah. So play the Fighting Bulls in Tampa. You know who the head coach of South Florida is, right? Is that strong? That's Charlie Strong. Very strong. Okay. I kind of stumbled upon the AC. Excuse me. AAC coaching salaries. Uh, Charlie Strong's the highest paid coach in the conference. Really? Five okay. mil a year. 
Okay. Good for good old for old Charlie. Yeah, yeah, he's doing well down there in Tampa. It's it's not that Texas money, but <laughs> right. It'll work. Um, and you and I have talked about. Well, we had an episode about the assistant coaches, and you mentioned him in your top five for Florida. So yeah. you know that's uh, so kudos to him. Uh, you know that's always going to be a stumbling block for UCF because of the proximity and because uh, they got pretty decent talent there. But USF will see a little bit of a drop off this year. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah back, going back to FAU, they start the season at Oklahoma. That'll be interesting. Oh, that's not even neutral site. They're going to Norman. Well, yeah, it says at. I don't know if it means neutral or not, but okay, they're yeah. playing Oklahoma. That I do know. Whew. That'll yeah. be interesting. I wonder what yeah. Lane Kiffin says before and after that game. If he's smart, he won't say anything. <laughs> but that, but we know he's going to say something. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. So, Miami do their thing. So, are we just looking at the schedules and everything? Are we saying that who's the best team in Florida? Is it Miami? I guess by default, maybe, maybe? maybe by default. That's what I would say. I mean, UCF's not going to be the same. We right. do know that. I guess you got to throw Miami. That's that Didn't was my it? thought. You know, there's. You know, Florida State's not quite there. Uh, you know, it eight and four is what I'm thinking. I know some people will they're going to say nine and three, ten and two. I they don't see it because I'm I'm going to chalk it up right now. Uh, Clemson, Notre Dame are probably losses, and okay. you're going to lose one of the other two, like NC State or Miami. You know, I, I I'm hopeful at the Miami game because we were so close last year, and we just talked about how they could be deceptively good. But nine and three is kind of a best case scenario, I think, and that that means you don't win the division. You're a pretty decent bowl, and I guess it really just comes down to how does how does Miami fare against those games they should win. Right, right. Interesting that with Miami they do play FIU um, this year. In oh, I know, right? Panthers are going to get them. <laughs> well, <laughs> that that's. Not gonna, but I mean, I yeah, a couple. Not no, I'm just thinking a couple storylines. First of all, Butch Davis is the coach oh. at FIU. He used to coach Miami. That's one storyline there. Number two, do you remember the 06 game where they had that really huge fight? That was those two teams. Yeah, I knew. I knew Miami was involved. I didn't know. I forgot who else was in yeah. it. That was. Oh, that's not. That's gonna be played up quite a bit. Yikes. Mm. So let's let's just hope that those guys keep it clean this time. Better beef up security. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's one of the reasons why it's been wise for Florida State never to play like FAMU in Tallahassee. Not that something like that would happen, but as a precaution, you just don't want to incite any kind of situation that may lead to that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So let's uh, let's pray for a clean game on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, all right. So that rounds out our Fave 5, and then we, we threw in some of the other Florida teams. Uh that was a really good list. It's been really yeah. fun. And, you know, we, we appreciate all the fans being patient because we want to put together some good material and there's going to be more to come. And we certainly want to bring you the best content and we don't want to grasp at straws and bring you lists and <laughs> episodes that don't really mean a whole lot when people are trying to make up topics. So um, we appreciate you, you know, holding us out, holding out for us uh, to put some episodes together for you. Yeah, I, I was interested to after the season go back and listen to this episode and see how close we were Ooh. or more importantly how far off we were <laughs> okay because i'm not i've never been real good at like predicting the season coming up i've been a lot better at week to week feeling each other out sure but so i'm very curious so i we gotta remind each other to do that and listen um, and see if we were if we got anything right. I like it. I challenge the fans to uh, bring some stuff to our attention. What we got right, what we got wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Sure they will. Sure they will. <laughs> I, I, as soon as we uh, as soon as we put this out there, we're gonna start getting that. I'm certain too. Uh, yeah. Thinking of one fan in particular. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. Speaking of that, uh, we've we've gotten some. We got some ways to 
have the fans give some feedback. We've gotten different ways, and we're continuing to improve the communication lines. But uh, Chris, why don't you tell us some of the ways that the fans can get in touch with us? Okay. The best way to get in touch with us or, or um, reach out to us is through Facebook, uh, Florida Focus Podcast. And we have some other um, avenues, too. Uh, we have a website, FloridaFocusPodcast.Libson, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. Um, we have a Twitter, Florida Focus Pod. And I'll, also, you can email us at FloridaFocusPodcast at Yahoo.com. Please feel free to criticize and give us your own list, too, and, and maybe a brief description of why you put those games where you did. We'd love to hear hear your feedback, and if uh, – if you have any device that rates the podcast, please throw as many stars and thumbs up as you possibly can. Absolutely. Well, actually, Chris, this is a great time for me to, to let you know there are two new features for our podcast, and hey, we launched them just in time. So the the first thing is we have a new and improved Snapchat account. So it's it's at FL Focus Pod. Um, we had to get a little creative with the naming there. So, um, <laughs> if you're, if you're ever confused on where that is, just go to our Twitter account. It takes you right to it. So cool. Got Snapchat. And the other a new feature of the Florida focus podcast is we are on Patreon. So this is a site dedicated to rewarding and helping sponsor any artistic venture. So it's Patreon P A T R E O N. There's a website, patreon.com slash Florida Focus Podcast. It's that easy. There also is an app for Patreon. And we want you guys to be able to contribute and make the show better. So the whole idea behind this is we're asking for 10 patrons to commit uh, to some kind of financial donation. And all we're asking for is $1 a month. It's really mm -hmm. easy. Um, and this works two ways. You're going to invest in the podcast. We're going to give you better content and – as an incentive, uh, we're going to do random drawings probably about once a month, and we'll give out a prize to whoever the patrons are. So just a small incentive, and uh, we already we already have a Patreon, and so that's, that's fantastic, and we're going to continue to let you guys know that's an option, and thank you in advance. So as the season comes up, uh, just consider it as an option. We really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. We do thank you guys. Thanks for listening, and we do appreciate – all that, uh, all the love that we've received and the feedback that we received, we we pray that we can keep that up. Yeah, I'm gonna piggyback on the love. It's it's been amazing, uh, just the support and everything. And this is just another way you can do that. So you know, thanks in advance, and uh, you know, we're gonna keep you guys uh, abreast this season, and we want to make sure that we have the best way to do that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, Chris. Um, that was a really good episode. Did you have any last thoughts before we uh, sign off and let these uh, fine people get back to perusing the college football world? Uh, I'm just uh, really starting, just starting to get excited and pumped, and this episode really helped me, and I hope it helps you. Yeah, it certainly did that. Um, so thank you, Chris. Thank you to the fans. Um, we'll see you guys very soon. Take care. All right.